Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. So I'm gonna be doing a few voiceovers because as you guys know, I am busy with this whole wedding thing with my cousin and it's been a really busy week, but I want to come out here and bring you guys some videos. So I wanna talk about the whole Kanye West situation because people have been wanting to know my opinion. I've been getting all types of messages and tags. And to be honest with you, I've been keeping up with it. If you guys don't know, Kanye West recently came back to Twitter. He came back the same weekend Beyonce did Coachella. Coincidence? I don't know. You can call Tyrone. You ain't got to lie, Craig. But he's been back and he's been just tweeting up a storm. And initially when he came back, he talked about how he was collaborating on a new album with Kid Cudi called Kids See Ghost. So they were going to be dropping that album. Plus he was dropping his own album. And I believe the Kid Cudi album is coming out June 7th. Something like that. So a lot of people were super excited. And then he started tweeting all this fake deep shit, okay? And I saw a lot of folks, you know, retweeting him. And, oh, Kanye's so deep. Like, literally, he can tweet, you know, I woke up today and I took a shower and it was wet. And people would just praise him for being so deep. I'm like, okay, whatever. It's Kanye. Well, soon after him tweeting all this fake deep shit, um, he then decided to, you know, basically start bigging up Donald Trump and Candace Owens and, you know, and he just let out a series of tweets that have bothered a lot of people in the black community. A lot of people are really upset that he's siding with Trump and things like that. And other celebrities have come for him. Um, John Legend reached out to him and Kanye West posted their whole exchange. Ebro reached out to him. Um, Snoop Dogg called him a coon and said he was cutting him off. He was done with Kanye. Yo, is it me or is that nigga Kanye West one of the niggas from Get Out? They fucking you up, cuz. You need to get out of that house. So it's just been a lot of drama. Kim Kardashian caught herself, you know, trying to have her husband's back. She was really upset. She feels like the, the media is demonizing her husband and being quick to label him as having mental health issues. So she's real upset. And then, of course, our great commander in chief decided to pipe up and basically give Kanye West props for being a staunch Trump supporter. Now, what I find funny is that he can pat himself on the back and give Kanye West props and shout out Chance the Rapper. But yet he's made no mention of the 29 year old black man who saved numerous lives during the whole Waffle House shooting in Tennessee. So this is our commander in chief people. What I also find funny is that Donald Trump is under a bunch of, you know, FBI investigations, but yet and still he has time to worry about what the hell, you know, some random hip hop rapper is tweeting about him. It's like, you can sit here and reach out to Kanye West. I think you have a lot more things on your plate that you need to focus on, Mr. President, but that's a whole nother video, okay? It's literally been a nauseating week trying to keep it with Kanye West. Okay, so now as of today, Chance the Rapper has come out because he was one of the first ones to stand up for Kanye West. And now basically he's apologizing for getting involved. Chance the Rapper is basically saying his name is Bennett and he's not in it. Okay, y'all remember that shit from the 90s. So he's saying that he's not in it. He doesn't want to have anything to do with this. And he's basically apologizing. And after he said his name is Bennett and he's not in it, Donald Trump ended up reaching out to Chance the Rapper. And Donald Trump says... Kanye West has performed a great service to the black community. Big things are happening and eyes are being opened for the first time in decades. Legacy stuff. Thank you to Chance and Dr. Darnell Scott. They really get it. Lowest black and Hispanic unemployment in history. So after Donald Trump basically reached out to Chance the Rapper... Chance the Rapper was really trying to distance himself. And he was like, nah, that ain't it, yo. And then at that point is when he wrote this long ass apology slash dissertation. I'm not reading that shit, but you can. Go ahead and check this out. All right, so you guys just read what Chance the Rapper had to say. So in my personal opinion, like I said, this entire situation is a mess, but I'm not shocked. You know, I always find it funny. Now, I am a fan of Kanye West. You know, I've always liked his music, you know, even through his crazy rants and, and delusions of grandeur. I've always tried to support Kanye and all his endeavors, okay? 
Um, but what I find funny is that the only time you really hear from Kanye, the only time he calls himself interacting with his fans, is when he has something to sell. Be it his $600 Yeezy shoes, uh, or be it his fashion line. He's been posting, you know, all types of fashion pieces and all types of shit. That's really the only time you really hear from Kanye, or when he's getting ready to drop some new music. But throughout the year, when he's not doing anything in particular... He doesn't really go on Twitter. He doesn't really interact with his fans. You know, he's more elusive. And, I, and I'm okay with that. You know, I'd rather have somebody who's a little bit more elusive than these, you know, attention horn celebrities who sit on social media all day, every day. <clears throat> his wife and her entire damn family. Um, so this is my takeaway with the whole situation. One, at the end of the day, what I hate is this whole sheeple mentality. And I think that's what I've learned watching all of this play out this week. I hate this whole, you know, we all have to be one way. We all have to think one way. And that's one thing I do respect about Kanye West is that basically he's literally changed his stance. This is not the same Kanye West of yesteryear, okay? And I think what a lot of people need to realize, for some reason, a lot of people, particularly in the black community, have basically elevated Kanye West to some type of, you know, spokesperson, political, you know, Maharaja, you know, some type of person that they've elevated to be be like the voice of the black community and I'm like I didn't vote Kanye to speak for me so I don't care about him going on a Twitter rant because to me he's just a celebrity and I feel like too many of us put stock in celebrities and we put them on these pedestals and as soon as they say something or do something that doesn't agree with our values we get butt hurt and I don't understand that. Like, people are still hanging on to the Kanye West of 2005 when he stood up and said that George Bush doesn't care about black people. I'm sorry to tell you guys, but that Kanye West is long gone. He's been long gone, you know? And people have the right to change their stance, grow, you know, start one way and, and, and evolve into something else. That's just part of being human. The same person I was in 2005 is not the same person I am today. And people have the right to be upset about his stance and him being a Trump supporter. I get that. But at the end of the day, that's what makes America what it is, is that we have the right to stand behind whatever candidate we want to stand behind. I remember after Trump got into office, and I spoke about this on my channel, and I remember a lot of young people asking me, you know, how did this happen? I don't get it. You know, all the polls were saying that Hillary's going to win. You know, I don't understand how Trump is the president. And I told you guys back then, the reason why Trump became president is because people were being dishonest on those polls. We have made such a toxic environment in this country where you're not allowed to state your opinion. You know, we grew up in an era, me and people who grew up in the 90s, where we could have disagreements. We didn't all have to be on the same page, but I could still respect you as a person. You know, as long as you were honest and upfront and open, even if I didn't agree with you, I still had to respect your stance for what it was, for it being your stance. Nowadays, if you don't agree with the majority, if you're not for, you know, a particular person, people will write you off, troll you, cuss you out, send you death threats. So what happened is that there was no honest dialogue on social media. Either you were for Hillary, and if you said anything about, you know, being for Trump, you, you were automatically coined a racist or a homophobe, and people literally chased these people underground. So when it came time to vote, all these people came out in droves, the people of the Appalachians, white women and everybody else who were low key Trump supporters. They came out in droves. And this is how this man got into the presidential seat. OK, and I see that kind of happening again, where people are basically trying to shut Kanye up. Y'all trolling him and calling him a coon and, and, and saying all that stuff. That's not going to change his stance. He has a right to feel whatever way he wants to feel the same way you have a right to feel whatever way you want to feel. I always find it funny when people get upset about other people's opinions. Meanwhile, stating their own opinions on that person's platform. You know, it's the same thing. And, I, and what I found, I mean, just almost comical about this is when I saw Snoop Dogg's tweet. Well, he called Kanye West a coon and said he was cutting him off. I'm sorry, Snoop, but you really have no room to talk. You know, Uncle Snoop, you probably perpetuated more bullshit than Kanye West has ever perpetuated, okay? Your whole coming up into the industry was basically promoting and perpetuating gang culture, okay? Perpetuating the killing of other black men who look like you. Kanye West never had that type of destruction in his music. So it's very easy for you to sit on your high horse now that you decide to become a gospel artist and now you're supposed to be this staunch Christian 
and then condemn him. When we could very well flip the script and do the same thing to you and talk about your past ways and the way that you used to think and, and this whole gangbanging culture that you ate off of. You know what I'm saying? You perpetuated, you got rich off of and then once it wasn't valuable anymore, once there was no more money in that, now then you went to Rastafarian. Then you were, you know, hanging out with the Muslims at the Million Man March and now you're doing the whole Christianity thing. So people could pick you apart. I'm not here to defend Kanye West, but all I'm saying is that at the end of the day, people are human and people are going to change their stance. The same Snoop Dogg of, you know, 1994 is not the same damn Snoop Dogg in 2018. People evolve. One thing that helps that evolution is damn money, okay? When Kanye West was that struggling college dropout, you know, trying to just, you know, get on with Jay-Z and Damon Dash and walking around with that fucking Louis backpack, you know, and, you know, he had a bunch of dope beats he was also broke you know he was looking for his chance into the industry he was looking for a way in so he was hungry he was more with the people his vibrational frequency was more in line with the people of Chicago with his environment but once he started getting money and fame and everything else He's seeing things in a whole new light. He's seeing things very, very differently. He's married to one of the most vapid people in the industry, which is Kim Kardashian. He's not going to have the same original mentality of the Kanye from the south side of Chicago that he has now that he's living in Calabasas with his wife, Kim Kardashian, and their three kids. At the end of the day, Kanye West is entitled to his opinion. He's entitled to support who he wants to support. The only thing you can do as a person is speak with your dollars. If you are upset by the things that Kanye West is tweeting, if you feel like he's a sell out and he's a coon and he's doing all this shit for attention then instead of adding him and sending him death threats speak with your dollars i hope all of you same people who are upset about what he's done and the things that he said none of y'all should be buying his albums none of y'all should be buying anything produced by kanye west that means if he produces anything you know with chance the rapper tiana taylor you know him and kid cuddy got that album coming out none of y'all better not be in line because again what i can't stand is this hypocrisy right now everybody hates kanye kanye's not shit i'm deleting all his albums but watch when his new shit drops june 1st and june 7th the same ones who are going in on him will be the same ones having him trending will be the same ones downloading his music listening to his music when he drops another line where his fucking sneakers are six hundred dollars and his t-shirts are 200 bucks y'all be the same ones to run out there and go buy his stuff so again we have to stop being hypocritical if you're that upset and you believe so strongly in your stance is so different from kanye west then make sure you speak with your dollars i don't want to see no tweets about people complaining about kanye west being a coon in a sell out and then once his new clothing line drops you're the same one bragging on instagram that you got a thousand dollars worth of yeezy gear which one is it and i think the most frustrating thing about this whole kanye west drama and controversy because i do feel like he's doing this you know for drama for controversy and controversy sells it gets people interested we all know he has a new album coming out but i think what frustrates me the most is that i'm seeing a lot of people just being real dismissive you know they're saying oh this is his mental illness or he's in the sunken place he needs to get out and that's what happens when people don't want to have real dialogue and real discussion to see where somebody's really coming from or to see their point of view. Dave Chappelle said it best a few years ago when he did an interview with the Actors Guild. And he said that, you know, people coined him as crazy. It's dismissive. Ain't no weak people talking to you. So what is happening in Hollywood? Nobody knows. The worst thing to call somebody is crazy. It's dismissive. I don't understand this person. So they're crazy. That's bullshit. These people are not crazy. They're strong people. Maybe the environment is a little sick. You don't want to figure out what's going on with them. You don't want to know what makes them tick. So now the new word, you know, instead of saying that somebody's crazy like they did back then, now the new word is, oh, that person's a coon. That person's a bedwitch. That person's in the sunken place. When that may not necessarily be the case, but because people are so wrapped up in what they feel is right and what they feel is moral and, you know, their own opinions, they don't want to get to know what somebody else's opinion is or know where somebody else is coming from if that opinion deviates too much from what they believe in. And I think that's what bothers me the most with this whole Kanye West situation. At the end of the day, a lot of this is just for attention. A lot of this is to bring attention to him and Kim Kardashian's latest business venture. All right, guys, I want to show you my bottle for KKW Body.
So this is not the press box, you guys. This is the regular box. I didn't do press boxes because I wanted everyone to get this amazing box. I thought this was such a cool box within itself that the bottle is like on a statue pedestal. So you guys just seen Kim Kardashian promoting her new perfume line. So my personal opinion, neither one of them are slick. Ever since Kanye West has been on this whole Trump situation, they both been promoting their clothing line. She's promoting her new perfume. You know, it's been nonstop promotion back to back to back. At the end of the day, I'm not about to get worked up behind this entire situation. Let's keep it real. Kanye West is no more than a puppet, okay? He's just somebody on Twitter. He's a celebrity. He has no real power. He has no real power to make change. There's nothing he himself can do for Chicago, even though he caught out Obama. Kanye West can't do anything for Chicago either. So again, I look at all this as just another man with an opinion, ranting on Twitter, stating his opinion about different topics, particularly Donald Trump, and he has every right to do so. I'm not about to sit here and lose sleep behind Kanye West and, and you know, his buddy-buddy relationship with Donald Trump. You know, like I said, at the end of the day, it's on each individual person to honestly decide how they want to handle Kanye West. I don't need advice from Snoop or 50 Cent or from any celebrity, you know what I'm saying? But again, if you're that upset, if you're that mad at him, speak with your dollars. Ranting and raving and jumping in the trending topic is not going to shut him up nor is it going to change his financial situation what will change that what will make him more humble is people not supporting him and his bs with their dollars so it's going to be very interesting to see how this goes come june 1st and come june 8th when his albums drop i wonder if he's still going to sell i wonder if he's going to make it on the billboard i wonder if he's going to go trending i wonder if these same people complaining today on april 27th will be the same ones lining up to get his new gear and his new album when everything drops in june see a lot of y'all like to be rocked to sleep and lied to and, and told sweet nothings by your favorite artists and celebrities but a lot of these people this, the same ones that you swear are so woke and so deep they have nothing in common with your nine to five working ass let's keep that all the way real just because diddy says a bunch of deep fake woke shit he has nothing in common with you okay but economically he has more in common with the donald trumps okay than he does with the regular average black person struggling in harlem to make their rent because gentrification has caused their rent to go sky high so don't be fooled by these celebrities and their words just because they say some shit that you like does not mean that they're really about that life you know i guess how i want to end this video is to say you know just stop looking to these people to lead y'all Leave them as what they are. They're just celebrities. They're just human beings. Kanye West tweeting and all, writing all that bullshit does not make or break me. His his tweets have no bearing on my life. You know, it's disappointing that that's the mentality that he has now, you know what I'm saying, versus the Kanye of yesteryear. But again, if Snoop Dogg is allowed to change from a fucking gangbanger to a gospel artist, then Kanye West has every right to change from a, you know, pro-black, you know, George Bush doesn't care about black people to a Donald Trump supporter. And it is what it is. At the end of the day, you know, we have to be responsible for our own actions and what we do in our own communities and how we better each other. How about we focus on bettering ourselves and each other before worrying about what Kanye West is supposed to be doing for the black community. So to end this video, I just want to say, do I agree with Kanye West's tweets? No, I don't. You know, I feel like Kanye West has lost his damn mind. But at the end of the day, Kanye West has the right to state what he wants to state. He has the right to side with whoever he wants to side with. That's what we call having freedoms or so-called freedoms in America. And I'm just not that type of person to get in my feelings or get upset because somebody has a different ideology or because somebody believes something differently than what I do. How he makes his moves is how he makes his moves and how I make my moves is how I make my moves. You know, so I'm just not going to jump on this whole, you know, Kanye West, you know, uh, coon train drag him he's a coon you know I'm, I'm not jumping on that bandwagon because half the people who have so much to say about Kanye West when it comes down to it a lot of them are not really doing anything for the black community either they're just tweeting and posting stuff to sound cool and to sound woke but behind closed doors they're not really doing a whole lot either okay so anyways that's my rant this is my opinion on all the fuckery that's gone down with Kanye West this week let's go ahead and get the discussion popping let me know your thoughts <laughs> Hey you guys, it's your girl T. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share my videos. You can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise. Also, don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.